Yeah, part of what makes that balance so difficult is the CDC now estimates that as many as 25 percent of Americans with coronavirus may not feel any symptoms at all, but still might be able to pass it on to others. So that will make stopping the spread even more challenging. Our Dr. David Agus joins us from Los Angeles with more on this. Uh, Dr. Agus, good morning. Uh, very disconcerting to hear that there are essentially ghost cases out there, people walking with the illness. How do you combat that if you want to try to slow the spread? Well, 20 percent of people or maybe more never have symptoms with this virus, and obviously they can be contagious. But almost everybody, right before they have symptoms, their virus level is actually very high and they can be contagious too. So you've got an entire population of people that can spread it. So when a young person says, hey, I feel fine, and they go on the beach in Florida, that could spread to people who can then spread it across the country when they return to their home after spring break. It worries me. So what do you do about it? <laughs> Um, what we do about it is we stay at home. What we do about it is we have uniform rules across the country how we don't go out because even if we feel fine, we can spread it. And then the other thing we can talk about is masks. You know, when you put a mask on, it's not actually to protect you from somebody else. It's so the droplets in your mouth don't get out. When you stand in front of a mirror and breathe, that fog are droplets. You put a mask in front of you, you can block the droplets. And so the whole notion of wearing masks when you go out, which is now mandatory in the city of Los Angeles, or it's recommended in the city of Los Angeles, I should say, um, it's to protect others. And I think it's fantastic. It's a good idea. As long as you're not wearing the N95 mask, which would be taking masks away from the medical workers who need them. Uh, one of the variables in watching this crisis unfold is just who is affected and why. We had a seven-week-old baby in Connecticut die just yesterday, I believe. And of course, people in their 70s, 80s, and 90s are affected. Why does this virus seem to touch so many people in so many different ways? That's the key question, Tony. You hit it. Um, last week, I had a 50-year-old couple who came in, and they both had the virus. Several days later, the, the wife was on a ventilator. The husband, who was in much worse shape than the wife, was fine and actually got better. About 2% of people will have serious symptoms with this virus. And the problem is, I can't predict which 2%. So everybody is worried they're going to be in that 2%. And if we knew who was in the 2%, we can treat them differently, much more aggressively with medicines. And maybe we figure out why we'll have a clue on how to stop this horrible disease. Yeah, it's very interesting. You mentioned that the, the husband and wife, uh, the, the man had more severe symptoms than the, than the woman. There's some anecdotal evidence that that may be the case across the country. Any going theories as to why men may be more affected than women with this virus? Yeah, we first started to see it in China, and we thought it was smoking, is that men in, in China smoke a lot more, use a lot more tobacco than women. We're seeing that here in the United States. We're seeing another troubling trend in the United States that our population who are getting symptomatic, really symptomatic, are much younger. But we're much larger as a country, as an individual. And we also use a lot more blood pressure medicines. We have a lot more blood pressure. So we're not sure the exact reasons for all of these, but these are important observations that when we figure out the biology, hopefully we'll be able to get a treatment based on that. All right, Dr. David Agus, thank you very much.